Okay, it's here. 135 inch screen is here. Um, I gotta get my trod because I gotta put this thing together. And I gotta locate some power tools. Yep, it's here. And I mean, surprisingly, this thing got here. Oh, first thing first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint using Ambient Light Rejection Technology Gain. Gotta find some tools. We have a power drill. We need that to put it together. And I'm going to need, where else am I going to need to put this thing together? I need a, uh, where's the trot at? The trot at? I'm going to run around the house. So it's just probably buried in that gaming room somewhere. It's getting messy in there, but I'm getting it done. So the screen came today. Way fast. This is another company I went with. So that's the old screen right there. And this is the new screen over there. In the box. This cane came much faster. Much faster. And man, I'm going to tell you something. I went through some crap with freaking Elite. Elite, you guys suck. I'm going to tell you why you suck. Because these jokers, man. Oh, man, I'm telling you. They put me through some mess. I had to do a charge back on to get my money back. So, you know about them sending me the wrong screen, number one. And then they wrote, um, pieces are missing. All right, that's going to happen. Stuff is going to go missing. All right, no problem. You know, that's going to happen, right? But at least make it easy for me to freaking get the, a replacement. Because I didn't want the money. I just wanted another screen from them. So long story short, um, trying to go through Amazon and trying to get this thing resolved. Um, I sent them like multiple emails. Amazon sent them multiple emails. The only thing they were replying back by saying, we need the serial number. We need freaking parts and we need to see inside the box and all that stuff. Like my debit card showing that I did the transaction wasn't enough. And even, um, where the frick is my trot at? It's supposed to be around here somewhere. And even um, with Amazon sending them stuff to, uh, I lost this thing to the house somewhere. Even Amazon sending them information like, look, this guy purchased this screen from you. All he's asking for is just a freaking replacement because I didn't want the money. I need the screen. And sure enough, duh, right there. I got to paint the screen today too. Sure enough, they kept sending back the same reply email by saying, oh, we need this certain information from you. We need the serial numbers and all this stuff. And mind you, I cut most of this stuff off the box because I'm doing an open box demonstration. So, anyway, um, after every time you send a, a complaint, Amazon replies back to a company. Um, the first thing they do is they give you 48 hours to, res to respond. Keep in mind, this is going to happen. 48 hours to respond. So, as long as they respond within 48 hours, they can send you anything. They can send you cu coupons to Applebee. Doesn't make a difference. As long as they respond within that time frame, they're clear of being ridiculed or anything. This has been going on for a couple of days. So every time I would basically complain about them not sending me anything, no shipping labels or nothing, they would reply by, oh, we need the special information. So um, every time Amazon would go in and, and basically complain, they would tell me I have to wait two days, two more days, two more days, two more days, two more days. Like, are you freaking kidding me? This is turned into a freaking spiral circle of a freaking nightmare. And then now I got so pissed off. I'm like, I don't even want the screen anymore. I went and bought me another one. I said, just go and freaking just return my money and leave it at that. So the lead screens were supposed to send me a shipping label. They never sent the shipping label. Every time I would apply for the shipping label, I go through Amazon and ask for a shipping label, and they go reply for a shipping label from Elite Screens, they would send me some dinky freaking email saying, oh, we need to serial numbers on the side of your box. Like my transaction wasn't enough that I basically had a receipt that I bought the screen. So I finally got tired of it, went around the house, found the information. Good thing I didn't throw it away because God forbid if you had threw away the screen, threw away the box that had those serial numbers attached to it. And keep in mind, there's no serial numbers on the screen. Don't even think about that because there's none on the screen at all, period. There's none in the manual at all, period. They're on the box. So if you throw away that box and they send you a screen that doesn't have the parts in it, good luck on trying to basically get your money back because it's going to be a freaking nightmare because every time you freaking contact Amazon about basically trying to get your money back and all you want is a basically a return label 
all you're asking for is a return label. Elite Screens will come in and send you some dinky freaking email saying, oh, we need the serial numbers. And meanwhile, you don't have the serial numbers. So they won't send you a shipping label until you provide those serial numbers. Until then, Amazon can give you your money until that screen show that has been picked up and taken to its destination and delivered. That is screwed up. So after going through that little nightmare, and every time I would call in, they would say, well, we have to wait two more days for them to respond back. They can respond back with anything within that 48 hours, and you still would have to go through that nonsense all over again. So I said, forget it. I paid through it with my PayPal debit card. I called the debit card department of PayPal, filed a complaint, everything went through. I have my money back in no time at all. But good gracious, all I was asking for from the beginning was just a replacement. That's all I was asking for. I didn't even want the money. Just a freaking replacement. And they couldn't even do that freaking thing right. And customer service, don't even bother calling customer service because you're not going to reach anybody but a freaking machine. And keep in mind, they weren't calling freaking Amazon. They were emailing them. So that's a big red flag right there. All right. So let's open this up. Enough of my freaking elite skin rant on that nonsense. Oh, and keep in mind, that's going to be sitting in the hallway for freaking 90 days. Because now since I had to do the charge back through my debit card, which now has to go through MasterCard in order for them to investigate this nonsense, it's going to take up to 90 days for me to see that money back on my account, which I don't care because at least the wheels are rolling instead of going through that mindless loop of maybe I have blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? At least I got the wheels are turning. I'm going to get my money back somewhere or another. But yeah, that's going to be here for 90 days because you know how the credit card companies work, right? That can take forever. 90 freaking days just because these jokers went and sent me a freaking shipping label. Thank you, Elite. I'm going to enjoy blowing out your screen today with this bad boy. Should order and find out exactly what else you've got to offer. Blow that out, too. All right, so let me get some scissors and stuff. You know, I am so glad that my common sense kicked in and said, don't trust these people. Go out and buy yourself another screen. Because if I didn't, I'd still be waiting here with no screen. All right. So, let's begin. Now, I can basically, my LED, the rest of my LED lights come on Tuesday, I can finish it out. You can see I'm actually working on the arcade setup over there. I already ordered the um, top paper, construction paper, contact paper. I'm gonna have the whole casing in black, and I've gone online to find me a full arcade stick to put in there for that setup right there. All right, um, let's get cracking, Jackson. Let's pop this bad boy open and see what's in it. I made sure when I ordered it, I didn't get the ones with the springs because this one is a little different than the spring. And oh, by the way, if you're interested in getting this screen, and I'm sorry, I agree, at least screens, customer service is horrible. Yeah, you understand what I'm talking about. Freaking horrible, man. Unbelievable. I couldn't communicate and couldn't talk to anybody over there, man. Unbelievable. And all I was asking for was a freaking shipping label. You can have your screen back. Yep. You see where I had to take that thing apart and put it back together? I mean, look, I understand. I understand that it's going to happen, that parts are going to go missing. It's going to happen, right? It makes the transition a little easier, man. But like I said, if you order a screen from them, keep the box, man. Keep the box. That rat race could go on forever. So, if you're interested, I'll put the link. I gotta put the link for the projectors and all. I forgot about that. I apologize about that. I'm a little crazy busy. But I'll put the link in where to get this screen from. The shipping time. The shipping time always says it's gonna be like five or ten days, but it's not that. It's a lot faster. I got mine today. I wasn't even expecting it today. Of course, before we start this freaking adventure, we'll have to move some of this stuff out of the way. You're probably wondering why I got an air conditioner in here. You ever run three projectors? You can try, we'll probably run in one projector, and projectors generate heat. I'm going to have three projectors in here running at the same time. So that bad boy is going to be needed. I had to dig that up. My neighbors are going to think, my neighbors already think I'm crazy enough for the fact that, you know, when I do demonstrations, I turn the lights on and off, on and off. So imagine you live right across the street from me and you're watching my lights go on and off and on and off and on and off. Yeah, you think there's something wrong with me. But 
they don't realize I'm doing ambient light projection demonstrations. So, you know, and they see me walking back and forth talking to a camera. Sometimes they don't see the camera and they think me I'm talking to myself, you know, stuff like that. So it's kind of funny. All this stuff away. So, yeah, that nightmare right there on its own, man. You know, I like Elite Streams, don't get me wrong. They're easy to put together, they're easy to assemble. I like the screens, but it's a nightmare, man. If you ever freaking lose those freaking serial numbers, you're screwed on, on so many levels. It's not even funny. I don't like talking to that freaking Amazon. I said, so what happens to the person who basically throws out the box? People throw the box out, what happens? Well, you know, could you give me an explanation on what, what happens when somebody throws the box out? Oh, I gotta set you guys up a different way so you can see it. Hold on. Yeah, don't, don't, make sure you take, cut them show numbers off your box, man, because right now it got so bad that I realized that I was never going to see the money at all, and this was never going to get started because instead of Elite Screen sending the information needed, they kept sending in the same freaking email request over and over again, asking for these freaking numbers. And as long as they basically chimed in within that 48 period time, they were good. There was no penalties. And I was telling Amazon, I said, look, you should at least have it that they don't have to chime in. Make it that they don't have the, have the shipping label before 40 hours, then you can give the person an instant credit. Nah, they all got their own loopholes, company policies and all that bull crap. You know, I just talked to a customer today. You know, he painted his screen, he had no problems with it, and he, it was, he ordered a gallon from my company, and I talked to him today, he called me up, and he called me, I said, send me some pictures, he sent me some pictures, and I said, well, I'll send you out a gallon for free. He said, I'll pay for it. See, that's what I'm talking about. I offer things for free because um, the bottom line is I just want to make sure you get your projection screen, you get it set up. That's what matters at the end of the day. You sit there, you get a chance to enjoy your screen. I always make the money back up, no matter what. But if it means that customer needs help with something, I'll help muscle them. I'll take time out of my day to help you find a projector or or buy things that you know that hopefully they'll work out well but if they don't then that's information you would know that not to deal with that merchant so you don't get scammed like I just did you know stuff like that you know so I just don't like the fact when these companies got guarantee when they first started out which most companies do when they first start out you know they're 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 pretty much great with the customers and as they get bigger and bigger and bigger they get less and less contact with them that nonsense, man. People have told me horror stories about freaking elite screens and trying to return stuff. But I never had to return anything because never had anything come with the parts missing. I learned my lesson that day. Oh, man, they're a freaking headache. All right, let me see. Uh, we, oh, yeah, I'm looking for you guys. Okay, I'm going to put you guys over here. You know, it's like the equivalent. Working with, trying to... Work with freaking elite screens, the equivalent of walking through a minefield with magnetic boots. Just figure out exactly how that one would work out. All right, I think we've got enough room to, I think I should disconnect all this stuff right here. Take all this stuff out. Man, I'm gonna need some bookcases in here. Uh, keep in mind, this is just all the wires you see running back and forth. This is just everything I'm testing out here. So when I get done, I'm going to have some major wire management. So you won't be seeing anything running across the floor. None of that stuff. You won't be having any of that. And let's get the Chrissy out of the way. Good, but I continue to do business with Amazon. You know, it's just that they got to, they got to, they got to work on other merchants I deal with. They're actually pretty good. Oh, let me see. Pretty much. Um, to tell you the truth, um, there's certain screens that have that spring support system in the back. Now that's the reason why I buy Elite because. Your spring support system, you can do it with your hands. You don't even need that freaking pulley that comes with it. 
Um, there's a little thing that comes with a hook that allows you to pull the screen over to connect it into the frame. So this is pretty easy to use. Some companies, I've bought a lot of frames. There's one company, I can't think of the name of it, but <laughs> their spring system, they make the springs too short. When you make the springs too short, that means when you hook them to the screen, you have to pull. You have to really stretch and pull to get it to lock into place because the springs are too short. So they do a good job. This system is a little different. I'll show you how this one's set up. I usually, I hate to say it, man, I really do, but it's true. Um, when it comes to elite screens, the spring system is actually perfect. It is absolutely perfect. I've actually taken apart, put together a screen right here on camera. They're really easy to put together. Um, so if you're going to do that spring system, you go with them. Now, this particular company, i got two companies that I deal with from time to time. Shipping's pretty fast. I'll put those links when the video's over. I'll put those links so you can check them out, and you can go to Amazon. The shipping time is really, really fast. This is 135-inch. I paid $184 for it. That was it. The Elite screen, I paid $264 for it. But at the time, when I bought the one downstairs, there was nobody else that had a 135. And this company popped up with 135s, and I bought one from them. I tell you one thing, somebody needs to come up with a 235.1 fixed frame. I mean, I've seen them already, but they're too expensive, man. They're way too expensive. I need one of these generic companies to come up with that screen. That'd be nice. I'll buy it from you. All right. So this right here has got to be a screen. Big question I want to know. Make sure this freaking, uh, the watch McCombs come with it. We need those. And of course, the cardboard I'm going to use to finish off my screen over there, to finish off my arcade system over there. This is perfect for the top header of my arcade machine. Be careful how I'll cut this open because I'm going to need this. Alright. So here's the screen right here. There's the screen. Nice and padded. So that's the screen. So we'll lay that off. Uh, we'll put that behind here. Because we're not going to need that right away. My main concern is to make sure. Oh, yes, they came. I'm looking at them right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is what I was missing off the lead screen. See this right here? This is a support bar that goes in the back of your screen. This keeps your frame from bending it inward. And these right here are called tension rods. They're needed to feed through the screen so you can actually connect it to the back of the frame so it pulls out and you have something to connect the support of springs to. That was what was missing. And this is all I was asking for, just this right here. And they wouldn't send it. That's all I was asking for. So I ended up paying $184 for another screen. And I still got one sitting in the back, another one. All right, so these are gotta be the sides. These are gotta be the sides right here. neighbors. What is he doing? What is he doing? Like this early this morning and I get up and I'm installing in the post in the backyard. Got these huge posts that I'm installing in the backyard. I'm putting network cameras back there. And the network cameras are for the animals that eat in my yard. I got all kinds of weird stuff that crawl through my yard at night. So I thought I'd network it basically do a little YouTube channel. Got an extra YouTube channel, one of these things. And I'll basically do a, a channel you can go on. You can actually watch these animals in my backyard that come in late at night. There's some freaky stuff to come walking through there. Yeah, because one day I was real quick, not to go on and on with another story, but I was sitting back in my yard in a ghillie suit with some night vision on. I got a few ghillies, so I had to play around with them from time to time. And I watched some weird stuff crawl through my backyard, man. I mean, it made me think twice about basically sitting up any patio furniture down there. Woo! Weird stuff coming through my yard at night. Here. Especially the skunks. Skunks are always in my yard. My fair share of peppy the fuse. All right, so we're going to take this because I need this for the project. That's going to be for the arcade system I'm building over there. And if the rest of my stuff comes in a day, we're going to do two paint on demonstration. So I got to paint a screen over there on the arcade on the wall over there for the arcade screen, and we're going to do the kitchen screen downstairs for the kitchen. That's already done and ready to go. I'm going to paint two screens in today. Actually, 
This one's gonna be done tomorrow because I gotta prep and get ready for this bad boy. I'm gonna put it together on camera. Yeah, but go to Amazon. Amazon's got some good ones. Just stay away from anything that, ha if it's not elite, I hate to say I endorse elites like this, but if it's not elite, if it's a spring system, stay away from it. I'll show you what I'm using. It's not a spring system. Ah, come on. Here's the knife. Inside the box. Inside the box. Yep, inside the box. Silver ticket. Silver ticket makes a really good string. They just cost a little too much. For me, it costs a little too much, but silver ticket does make a good screen. To put together the sun, I bought a couple of silver tickets before. There you go. So judging by, see how the ends are flat on this side? And see how they're curved on this side? This is the bottom part of the screen. This is the top. So what I do is I like to do is I like to map my screen out on the floor but like I said some people said well aren't you worried about aren't you worried about damaging the screen by getting felt the felt damage no you just take a basically a, um, a felt brush a roller or a felt roller over top of it so this one's going to go here and that one's going to go there Get this one and this one. Anytime you build these things, the top and the bottom part of the, the screen, the length of it, they're always cut in half. So they have like a flat part to one end and an angle to the other. So it's pretty much self explanatory. You don't really have to read it. I never read instructions when it comes to this. I did. I put a lot of these. I like to put together by a curved one. Oh, I forgot to talk to that customer. There's a customer calling it a curved screen. I need to talk to him. I want to see how his setup is because I want a curved string somewhere one of these in the house. I want to do a curve. There we go. Okay, so this should be here you know, flat on this end, so yeah. So we got one here. This one goes like so. This one goes here. So. Right. Two little pieces right here. The side, and these are got to be the parts. I knew something was wrong. When I pulled that elite screen out of the box, it was too small. I told you it looked like a 120 inch screen. And it did. It was 120 inch. That's another problem I had too. The screen looked weird. So when I got it, keep in mind, my 135 was supposed to be on here December the 23rd. And this screen got here way before that. And I'm thinking it's the 100 inch screen, the one over here. But it wasn't. And as I'm unboxing, I'm thinking, okay. They gave me a 120 inch screen by accident. And I went to look at my order form. It said delivery delivered on the 135. I said, that can't be a 135 inch screen. It's too small. This is the size of the 135. I know, I put it, because what I got in there is huge. Anyway. Let's see. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let me make sure that both of these are the same. Freaking beautiful. Yeah, this is how it's done. Take some lessons. Sweet. Like, I can't blame them. I 
can't blame them for missing parts. I can't. Like I said, it happens. It's a thing that happens. You can't really blame them for that. How they handled it, that's what I'm waiting for. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Make sure we get our ends together here. Here. There. Everything fixed. Size it up. Yeah, there you go. That's a 135 inch right there. Now this system's a little different. The lead screen had the, usually the hook system, I think it's saying lead screen, but also the hook system with the springs, they hook up in the frame, and then the um, material has a little slit in it, you slide the rail through, it's a little hole, and you take the spring and you hook it into the hole, and that's what pulls it tight to the frame. This is, a little different system. I'll show you. If you ever see these and you think it doesn't work because you're used to seeing the springs, no, these actually work much better than the springs. And I'll show you. All right, so I built these before. I'll show you. If I'm not responding back to questions right away, it's because I'm kind of occupied on this. All right. Another thing you want to be careful to, make sure the tabs that connect your screen together are not plastic. I've seen plastic ones. You want to make sure they're metal. Plastic ones will snap right in the middle and that cause your screen to basically have all kinds of issues and make the image distorted. It's right here, these are the brackets that are going to go in there. These are the straights that connect your screen together from there to there in the middle. All right, instructions we don't need, done this before. Now. You don't have a spring system, you have these things right here. I'll show you why I like these better than the springs. There's no pulling on, you don't have to pull to stretch your screen. Now you see this right here? This is what we're gonna use a locker frame in. So let me get a charger real quick for my phone because it's dying, and I'll show you how to do this. If you ever see a screen with these things right here, trust me, this is the best one to go with. There's no uh, to pull it over the screen. None of that nonsense. We're gonna need to put this together in no time at all. Trust me, really fast. It's gonna be really fast put, put together because I've used these things a lot easier to assemble. Let me put this charger in here real quick so we don't run out of juice. Am I good? Am I out? Come on, man. Really? Sorry about that, people. There we go. I'll go through all that. I'll take this power cord here. All right, we're on ten percent. Wow, close. All right, so what you're gonna do right here is you don't put your frame together yet. Don't put it together yet. Separate it a little bit on the edges. Don't want to put it together yet. There's a reason why you don't want to put it together yet. Because, see these rails right in there, the little grooves? You're going to take this little piece right here and you're going to slide it into that groove like this. Get that to slide in there. See? So that slides in there, that's how you connect them in. That's it. You slide them in there. So you got to count your holes on your screen. To go to your screen, you count the holes at the top. 
how many times, maybe, maybe 10, maybe, maybe 16, you slide all 16 in there. Then once you slide them in there, you take the uh, bar and you put it through the slits and your screen and you just pull it over and you lock it behind that bar, behind this right here, and that's it. That's how easy it is. So, what I gotta do is, I gotta open this up real quick and see what we got. Because not all of them are the same. They're all cut a little different. I prefer those than springs any day. Very easy to put together. Get some. I don't want to get the darker curtains, but I might have to. Let me see. So, what we got to do is lay this out. That's all. We're going to lay it out. Don't worry about it because you paint over it anyway. If you choose to paint over I'll paint over it. There's no way in the world I'm going to put a white screen. So, lay it out. Get your holes at the top. Count them. Go one, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten for the top. All right. I gotta write every day thing down because I'm Mr. Forget So Yo. So we got ten at the top. There's ten at the top. And the side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six at the side. Sides at six. So now you know how many you got. Sides. You know how many you got. All you gotta do is take the string and just roll it back up again. You really don't make a difference what side you have. I don't think you're over it anyway. brackets in here and all you do is just count them how many you need so the top we all know that you need remember I got to write things down because I forgot really that fast um, boom okay ten at the top one two So since it's 10 at the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 5 here and 5 there. All right? If anybody showed you how to slide on the rail system, that's how we're going to do it. So we'll start off here, and we'll drop. Well, you can't see me here. I've got my 5 in here. Some people shy away from these because they think they're like, oh yeah, it doesn't have the spring system, so it's generic. I don't want it. No, actually, these are the best ones to use. The best ones to use. See, that's five right there. Oh, another five here. See, so one, two, three, four, five. Yep. And you have arrows in there too, showing you where you need to go. Done. We got uh, another plank to the top. They always give you extras just in case. Right there. I'm watching because I got packages coming in today. Most likely, I need that frog tape more than anything in the wall because I think that frog tape is going to finish out. It's five, seven. All right, so I'll come here. Make sure it wins up to the seat. All right, so we'll put another five here. Slide it on the groove. Now, like I said, I'll put a link. This company also too makes them in a hundred inch. I think they make it in 90, 100, 120 inch, and they make it in 180. So we got one, two, three, four, 
five here, there's five there, and we'll come over and we'll put five here. Sorry, you guys see the bottom of my filthy socks. I do apologize. All right. Now keep in mind, I'm building this whole gaming setup. I'm not trying to spend like a ton of money. I'm doing all this on the cheap. Like, I'm going to do it all on the cheap. Whew. As much as on the cheap as I possibly can. So all the projectors I got, I mean, the most expensive projector that's coming here was like 500 bucks. And that was basically that crispy 505. But all the ones in here are like 100 bucks. Except for that Sony, but that Sony's not going to be here. I'm getting rid of that. I want all Christie's in this area. All right. So this area right here, it's going to take... Um, did I put them on already? Oh, I forgot the extra one. I just show you guys how to do it. We had to do six at the bottom and the sides have six. But since I already have one in there, showing you guys how to do it, we already got one done. So I'm gonna get this one right here. Slide it in. Really easy. I gotta get lead lights for the back of the screen too. I forgot to. I got a pack of lead lights downstairs, so I'll throw them around this one right here. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We need one more for that one. That's done right there. We have another one ready to put together. So we're pretty much already done with the spring system already put in, well, the lock system, whatever you call it. All right, so that's one, two, three, four. Need one more. All right, six right here. On top of that, we're going to build a bunch of cardboard projection screens. As a matter of fact, I ordered some of that congregated cardboard, that real thick cardboard like this. We're going to build us up a cardboard projection screen. And it's going to cost us next to nothing to do it. we probably got to figure out exactly how we're going to do the border because we're going to use that contact paper. And with that contact paper, man, I've seen what it looks like, raised, like steel raising up like on certain... Oh, man, it's going to look pretty cool, man. Or there's a place you can go to you can design your own contact paper. So we're going to make our own screens using frog tape, contact paper, and cardboard. Yes. I mean, if we get two couple of sheets of that thick cardboard, we put it together, maybe we can cut some holes in with a jigsaw and maybe install speakers. Ah. So stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just showing how to build stuff for real cheap. All right, so we're done here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure we got everything lined up. That's all good, we're done there. Now we just do is just put the screen together. That's the next stage. Oh, uh, what did I just drop? We always get extra screws anyway. We're gonna put the screen together. Now, they give you these brackets right here if you want to hang the screen up, but I don't bother hanging them up because uh, these screens are pretty lightweight. My screen right there is hanging off two screws, that's it. Two screws dropped in the wall, make sure I, I didn't have to worry about it. I'm not even hitting the freaking support beams. Trust me, the one downstairs is actually hanging off a window seal. So there's no weight to these things at all. They're really lightweight. I can lift that 135 inch screen by myself and carry it around the house. It's not that heavy at all. Now the ones they first came out with, those suckers were heavy. But I usually don't use these at all, period. And I figure out that one too, because we don't need it. All right, so where's the power drill? Here. slide around in here but I'm going to show you and just see that little hole right there it's going to slide right it's just slide right in here let me see I'm sure I get this right there we go so right there it slides right in that little hole right there in the front you can see boom there you go easy Mick cheesy now, when I put mine together, what I do is, and I tell people, because those are metal um, L brackets, 
You want to put it together here first. Do not put the middle together and put it here together. So you can basically have two parts, two C's. One C this way, one C that way. So that way you can put the screen together, you can just snap it together. Some people build it all the way around and you get to that last corner, you gotta bang your screen out just to get that piece to hook in. You don't wanna do that, you'll bang your frame. So that's the best way to do it. Just build it like a C. C here, C here. And then CC, put it together. I oh, know my jokes are corny, I know they're corny. Just don't quit your day job. Oh man, these are hacks. All the hacks, what the heck? Oh man, all right, I gotta go downstairs and get my tools. These are screws. They're hacks, man. So I gotta go with the, I got tools for that. I'll be back. One of these should fit perfectly. Let's see which one we need to do this. Let's see. I'm not an expert on knowing which one to fit, so Ooh, we're at the back. Cool. Okay. That'll work. Here, but it'll go through. A little too small. Let's see what we got here. I think it'll work much better. I just don't feel like using the hex key all the way around. Oh man, it just takes forever. I have to just take a drill and just go right through it. Better. And we just receive, receive the same process all around. That's it. And then we'll be done out of here no time at all. We already got the uh, support system already put in. The frame. So, it's okay to do it with a drill, I'm telling you. So much faster. Get out of there. Oh, that's in there. Now, there's a couple of companies out there that have the borderless ones. They're pretty cool. I got two of those downstairs. The interesting thing about it, I told you already about the borderless screens that have no freaking frame. Um, those, the, the, um, the material doesn't go on the bottom. It actually wraps around the entire frame. Those are the borderless ones. They're actually pretty easy to put together too. Should 
be using my little hammer, but nah, I'm not using that thing right now. You have to put a lot of pressure on it, that's all. So we're pretty much almost just about done. Now, when you install your LED lights, some people complain about the sticky tape coming off the back of it. That girl gets stuck in there. Some people complain about the LED lights on how the sticky tape comes off. Real cool trick to that, because you get some everyday packing tape. All my lights have a light packing tape all around them so they don't come off. Because they will heat up, not enough to burn your house down, they just heat up. And sometimes the glue basically dissolves and it may basically unpeel. So you put a little tape over the top of it, some clear, and that's it. That's how I do the back of all my screens. A little light tape over it, it'll never come down. And keep in mind, my what, a screen outside has tape on it. So that thing's been through rain and everything else hits the back of that screen. Let me see. We got to get two more. Two more for this one. I don't understand this. I don't know why every time they launch a gaming system, they know what happens like every year. You think they would learn from their mistakes that if you launch a system, they always come out short. There's just never enough around. And then you know the ones that end up on eBay are like what two, three grand for them. So you would think that if you've gone through that the last time, why well, wouldn't you make more systems so everybody can have them? You know what I mean? But I think they do that basically so they can keep the demand up on it. You know what I mean? To keep people buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. Make sure they buy it. It's a marketing scheme. That's been going on since forever. Forever. You think like, look, if I got a shortage in a certain something, would I make sure I have enough of supply and demand? Oh, real quick. I was having a conversation here with a few people about one minute. I was having a conversation here about a few people about talking about the Dreamcast. How the Dreamcast was before its time and the memory cards are really interesting. I still have my Dreamcast memory cards, like all of them, with all my original download games. But the cool thing about these Dreamcast cards, if you've never seen one of these before, if you don't, you weren't from that era or anyway, that their cards would allow you to download many games on here and you could pull them off. There's a battery that went into the back of it and it would operate independently by itself and you could play it like a little Game Boy. Yep, but these were the Dreamcast memory cards. I've never seen a gaming system, well, all gaming systems take hard drives now, but I remember, man, the memory card was life, man. Somebody lost your memory card, that was a fight. That was literally a fight. You lent somebody your PS4, I mean, PS2 memory card, or PS1, and they lost your card, that was an automatic fight. Because that was all your saved games on there. Yep. Those were the good old days. Your memory card, man, that was your lifeline. Your lifeline. And they started building them with the built-in hard drives. And now it feels like the hard drives just don't have enough space. Like they just 
never have enough space on the hard drive, man. I mean, I've already depleted a gig already on my freaking PS4 downstairs. I have to delete games already to make room for other games. Already. So I seem to be having a little, little difficulty. One of the screws has got a bit of a mind of its own. Because I'm going to play right with this one. I don't know why when I get to the very last end of it all. Insanity starts. So let's see, because I'm having a screw that just, I don't know if it's stripped or what, but it didn't go in properly. Let's see. Might be fixed this mess. We only got two more to go, we're done. I'm going to leave it like this, right? Because it has to lay flat in order for that piece to go over top of it. So let's see what happened with the wrong here. Saturday. That's what it is. I always mess up and get the days wrong. Man, I'd be horrible if I was a rock star. I'd come into Philadelphia and go, hello, Washington, D.C. And crowd would be quiet. Like, okay. <laughs> like, no, Dad. No, if, if, if we're in Philadelphia, like, oh. Just about done. Um, that's my phone going on. See, I thought people were going to reach my phone's right downstairs. I just can't, of course, you can't answer it because I'm redoing this video. So I may have to wait until I'm done. Sorry. We're going to have a lot of fun when we start building the arcade cabinet out of cardboard. Yeah, we're building a cabinet out of cardboard. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be sturdy, very sturdy. Cool to do.
difficult area right here. Right, people. Ouch, my back. All right, so now we got to do is put together the middle pieces right here. I had a difficult time getting that screw to lock in place, so I had to change up my hips a few times to get them to go. But it went in perfect. It went in okay. So like I said, you'll have to sometimes. Even when it's working the hard way, you have a little problems in the pop game. Good way. All right, so we're good there and there. Let's put our little slabs in right here. We'll drop these in next. You don't want to put that in yet. Don't put that in yet. We're going to try to put it in both at the same time. And don't worry if you lose screws because they always give you extra. So that's something you don't have to worry about losing any screws.
that up here. Two people do this, but uh, we can do it on our own. Uh, let me see. Do that the size of such a question. And me to That's the way to do this. Don't worry, some of you might cringe. You see me pushing the belt across the floor. Oh, God, no, why? some reason this is not connecting correctly. So let's see what's going on with this. There's nothing blocking it. Alright, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why it's in there. So badly, I don't want to do this on camera, but I just want to shove the screen into the wall so it basically just locks in place because these are two difficult areas to do. <laughs> I don't want anybody to do this and basically mess the frame up, but I, you know, I doubt you're going to mess it up. I really am. I doubt you're going to mess it up. There we go. This is a little bam! But yeah, I do that when I mess it up. And that was very unprofessional. And this wouldn't go in. I didn't have a chewing. I might do it. Hold on. There we go. That's all I needed was that one hit to go in. Because it wasn't going in at first. There we go. It locked in. Like that was very emotional. That had to be done. I didn't jack up the frame or anything. There we go. I just want to just snap it. I didn't hit the whether to do that on camera or not. Like, I don't know. You guys seem like, yeah, I've seen Kenny just freaking slam a screen into a wall. Can you get away with that? I don't know. It worked. You hear that sound? I told you not to be rude or disrespectful to anybody, but I have crows outside my house. Like literally, one of these days I'm gonna show you. There's like 15 to 20 of them laying on the gate and you just sit up there and just chill. Man, last time I heard crows, man, I was in the freaking cornfield, man. Freaking West Grove. Done on that. 
Like I said, you'll get a little lint on it. That's basically about it. But keep in mind, I mean, if you put material down because you're worried about jacking up your velvet frame, it's going to collect more dirt, as I said, laying against your wall. Especially when your kids come to go, what is that? It's so soft. Let me put my lollipop on it. No, I'm not with you. But I would, if I were you, I don't have to do it, I don't have any kids. But a little trick, you might want to scotch guard that, all right? When you get it done, before you put the material on before you paint it, you want to scotch guard your velvet because your kids, if you have kids, and I have little ones, I have god kids, they will come in and they'll look at it, they'll be curious, but they'll rub their hands on it and they may jack it up. But like I said, you know, I had a customer one time, he hit my man, we were designing gray screen paint, and one of his kids decided to come downstairs and draw stick figures and houses and all over his screen. He was like, what am I going to do? Like, just paint over it and be done with it. That's all. That's what we did. That's why some people buy a little bit more just for touch ups. Alright, so that's enough of the talking. Let's get this all out of here. Alright, we're done here. This is all done. Alright. That's it. Make sure we got our rushable pump here. We got six in here. Six over here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five here. Three, four, five there. That's ten all together on that one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One time I put many screens together and I actually had an extra one in there one time to take the frame apart and pull it out. All right, so now we're going to get our material here. Voila! And for those of you who think I'm going to leave this white, you have lost your freaking mind. Get off me. Alright, so we're just going to lay this down like so. Start from here. I'll show you, I'll, I'll show you close up. You don't want to see that. I'm backwards. Let's go forward on this one. You don't want to see that. Oh, oh goodness. Alright, so we'll roll this out. We are definitely going to do something with this. There's no such thing as bad cardboard. Just put it back in the tank. Okie doke. Oh, so static. Right now, if I were to touch a motherboard right now, I would short it out. Literally, we short it out. There's so much static just pulled up on me right now. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'll show you a front on this. This is also your support in the back because this keeps your screen from, your screen may feel kind of sturdy, but it's not sturdy at all. I made a mistake, like when I first started doing this, you make your mistakes, dumb things you do. And I put this screen together and I freaking put had a bar in the back. And I was like, I don't need this. I threw it away. And later on, I noticed my, my screen, like when I watched a movie, there was a kind of a kind of a U to it because the frame had bent inward from the from the suspension. All right. So there's our rail right there. Put it back. Notice I'm reading no instructions when doing this. It's pretty easy to put together, to tell you the truth. They're not that hard to put them together. Some people make it sound like it's really hard to do, but it's not. All right, so same as the other one with the Elite screen. Usually the ones at the bottom, the length of the screen, those basically have a little cap part on them. They may have it on it. Yeah, they do have, they have the cap part. So I'll show you, you can tell which one's which. You can tell them by height. All right, so I just want to get the tape. You get the tape off of here first, and you'll be able to see which is which. So some people get this part mixed up. They don't know which ones go in, and it's pretty easy. So the ones that have a piece like this on the end, see that right there? That's the extension. That extension to it. These are the ones that go to the length of the screen. 
All right. Now, which ones go to the length of the screen? I'll show you that one. They're actually shorter than the side pieces. Those are the ones that go to the length of the screen. All right, so. I already built like one apart. All right, so when you size them up, right? You size them up, you'll notice that you'll see these right here with the little caps on the end. That goes to the side, these are the sides. Next side, sorry, to the, um, to the length of the screen. My bad, sorry about that. So this one, and this one are the length. Now, how do you know which one actually attaches to the length? All you gotta do is just drop, drop it down, and you'll notice that when you drop it down flat to the floor, right? Hey, how you doing? When you drop it down flat to the floor, these right here will be slightly shorter. The shortest ones are the ones that actually attach to the length of the frame. These are the ones that will go to your sides. All right, so we'll lay them right here like so. So what we're gonna do is connect these together. All right. So you connect them right in here. You don't have to glue them or anything. Just connect them right there. And that's it. Now what you want to do is, you want to feed those, we got enough room in here, Here this, oops, I think just bumped the crap out of the camera. So let me show the shorter piece first. This is going to be hard to show you from that one. All right, let's grab, okay, that's a long, that's a long piece, we don't need that. That's a long piece. And this is actually, let me see this one piece right here. Those there. Make sure I got those there. I'm gonna get those mixed up. Where is here? We go. So, this is what we're gonna do. I'll show you. So, basically, on the side, you have this little gap in here, right? And in that little gap right there, that's where you slide your whatchamacallit. You don't get anything dirty out of that, people. You said slide into a little gap. <laughs> so that's pretty much it too. Take this right here. I'm gonna show you up close if I get my hands out of the way. Take that right there and you slide. Yeah, booper. All right, hold on. All right, so we take that right there. Right. Booper again. I'll get it, I'll get it. Don't worry. We'll do it again, we'll get it in there. All right, I'll get it in there. I just want to show you. So when you watch me feeding this, you got a mental idea of how it's done. All right, so see that little hole right there? That's where you want to clean this up. We're all adults here. This channel is set for 18. That's where you slide the pole in. Just trying to keep a Christian. All right, see? So it feeds in there. So that's the side of your screen. Actually, no. Oh, I should slide in the wrong section. It's supposed to be on the side. But you got an idea. That's to the side. Let me watch one for a minute. Okay. Usually when I hear kids, usually kids are the ones that are, that, are, that are dumb enough to walk up on my porch and try to take something off of it so they don't know better. You gotta walk through that driveway first, Sparky. All right, so let's see this to get this done a little bit. Come on. If you're asking me questions and I'm not replying back, it's because I'm not being rude because I'm occupied putting the screen together. So if you got any real long, lengthy messages, um, I don't have any information in this video. You can go back to, uh, go back, come out of here and go into one of the other videos. The information is posted. Let me get this back in here. Let me get this back in the hole. It's not hard to do, it's just sometimes that PVC just kind of sticks together a little bit. Here we go. There we have it, hopefully. Come on. Yeah. Alright, good thing I ate today. Alright, cool. We got a hole. Right, there we go. You just feed it through. I like how the 
Oh, it's not too snug. Oh man, this just sounds so dirty. I'll tell you It's not too, <laughs> sorry people. It's not too snug. It just slides in easily. I'm really not trying to be dirty here. It's just basically the only way I can just explain this. That's why the channel is made separate, adults only. All right. So that's finished. Now let's go over and let's grab one of the longer pieces and let's slide that in over here. See, they can't see my camera right now. Where my camera's positioning, they can't see it. So from the window, when someone's looking in, it literally looks like I'm in here talking to myself. So that's why I think they think I'm crazy. But then again, it's a good thing because they leave me alone. Because I can go outside and work. I don't have anybody coming over asking like a million questions. I don't mind asking questions, but when I'm recording, you see a camera flashing in the background. Why would you choose that time to have a conversation with me? Oh, are you recording? Yeah, that's what that flashing indicator light is for. Pretty sure you know what it is since you do have a phone. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't know. You knew. You freaking knew. Alright. Wait, one thing I'm not liking on this. Those pieces don't lock in too tightly. So, I gotta get a little tape. Because they're not locking in too tightly. The, uh, where you basically connect one rod to another, just not slipping out and the last thing I want is that to slip out why I'm basically sliding it through I need that to stay together so I'm just going to put a little tape on that and there's no way in the world this is going to disrupt your picture in any way just tape it on the end makes it smooth just make sure that stays in place and it come out that's better alright so let's get this to go through Let me go check. Sometimes you gotta check because sometimes things get snagged on the holes a little bit. You gotta check. Alright. Speeding it through. This is what I was missing on the leap screen. Because without this, you can't hang the screen. The screen is not gonna attach itself to the screen without this particular, without these uh, tension rods. You know? I might go order me another one of these screens right here. I might get another one. $135, I mean, sorry, 135-inch for $184. It's not bad. Over here, a more. Near the end of this now. So let's get this a little forward up here a little better. Let me slide that little turn through. And also to uh, measure the screen, you measure your screen to make sure it's going to fit. Uh, make sure you measure the whole frame, the frame at all. Because some people what they'll do is they'll measure the um, the inside of the frame, not considering the fact that that outside frame is an extra two inches, or maybe an extra inch, and that's going to take up some room. Let's see what we got going on here with this one. Wait, 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 they got the buzz, okay, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, all right, well, that's what I want to do, this is break something while we're in here, what I want to do is to make sure that that doesn't slide out, I need a big piece, just a little small piece, that's it, that's all you need, I'm just going to tape it, it pulls apart there. Let's make sure that stays. All right, let's get this side right here. Everything out of the room is set up this right. Actually, I can't set it up yet. 
Oh man, my frog tape. Yeah, my frog tape. I ordered frog tape. That's not even here yet, and I need that because I can't paint the screen without the frog tape. This one got a rail through. like 40, 50, 60 times over. So, if that's the case, you know, if PayPal comes back and tells me, well, look, uh, through investigations and through them, and you may have to wait like 90 days before you get your money, I'm just gonna keep the freaking screen. And what can I do with it? Well, I can't use it as front projection because it has, uh, it's missing the, uh, the, um, the um, detention rods, but I can turn it to a rear projection screen. Yes, I can. I can actually build my own freaking screen out of using um, um, invisible tarp, which got it see-through tarp, and I'll just use the frame and I'll build myself a nice dark room lock system and build my own um, 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 rear projection screen out of 135 inches. Because we do make that that um, that silhouette technology, that great technology right there for front and rear. Yeah, I'll do it with that. They can keep the music 200 something freaking bucks. Don't do business with them anymore. But, you know, I'll, I'll figure out something to do with it. All right. That's it. Now, here's the most interesting part. Those of you who left the room, you're going to have to rewind on this one, because I'm not doing it twice. Let me show you how we're going to lock this in place. This is going to be really easy to do. So unlike using the spring system, which you're going to have to do a lot of pulling, this one is going to be a whole lot easier. So I'm going to show you this while you stick around to the end. All right, so see each one of these arrows right here? You take one of these, you slide it down to where the arrow is at, right? So if you're taking, trying to figure out exactly, see where this bar is sitting behind here? Push it, hard about that, push it through so it lands behind the bar. That's it. So the bar locks behind here, and this causes the tension for the screen to pull. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's why I tell people, if you see a screen that has that particular system on it, buy it. They're much easier than using the springs. The springs you gotta take it, you gotta pull it over, you gotta lock it in place. Nope. Now watch me fit this in the other, no time at all.
best way to build them. All right, the springs and all. Now, like I said, out of these springs, they have the easiest ones to use for the spring system. This right here, piece of cake. And these things have a groove in the system that allows the um, the uh, the bar to actually go around the top of it and lock into a little groove. And that's what keeps them in place, keeps them from slipping out. Seeing the screen start to stretch out. Here we go. The side. I'm going to pull a little bit, but not a lot. Just stretch it out. There we go. If you ever get one of these, you know exactly how to put it together. Very easy to do. I hear a vehicle on the side of my house. I wonder. Nope, that's the crazy people. That's the stalkers. Yeah, I think things are everybody. I'm pretty sure they things for me. Well, a few make things probably. Who knows? Done. Usually this is the hardest part to do when it comes to these screens, but this is this system right here, easy. That's it done. Very easy to put together. Most people see that locking system like that, they shy away from it because they think, oh, that's generic. That's not gonna work. These are actually the best things to use. So that slides into your rail like so. And see this little groove right here? That bar locks right behind that groove. That's it. There's no pulling, no straining, nothing. I don't have to use any tools to put that together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it against this screen right here. But right now, because um, I can't set anything up. As a matter of fact, I need to get my hands on the Xbox because I'm gonna paint this screen today. So I need to see what it's going to look like on this system over here on this box, so we'll disconnect some of this stuff right there. So oh, I forgot the one important part. Sorry about that. This second has to go on. You want your frame bending on you. Any other room.
I got lint all over it, but I ain't worrying about it. I'll take a belt and go over top of it. It's got some lint on it, but you just take your belt and just go over top of it. But there it is. And it's got me thinking now. I could have gone bigger. I think I could have got 150 inch in there. Oh, man. What the freak? I wonder if it'll fit in there. I gotta find out now. Could have gone with 150 inch. Let's see. Let's see if we can just fit in here perfectly that I'm good. Because what I can do is I can just get some really cool, some giant um, center speakers, lift them up a little bit. But let's see if we could have gone bigger. What was that? Where did that fit? I'm pretty sure I have my measurements, right? On the screen. Oh shoot, I forgot my charger's not even plugged in. Hold on for a minute. Okay, you guys charge and I'll burn out. This is my video due to the fact that I didn't have my charger in. Okay. And then nasty. All that work for nothing. Screw the batteries on. Oh, 31%. Okay, cool. I got the quick charge. And that's the one I wanted. And I'm thinking, nah, it's not gonna fit, it's too big. Now I'm curious to see if it was fit. I'm glad to block at this window because keep in mind on this side I have a tennis court, may not golf course, and on this side I got nosy neighbors. So Happy to be able to block that window off. All right, so let's see. Let's see a moment of truth here. All right, so not a heavy screen. Easy to lift. exactly right look at that I don't even use that closet anymore so I don't care that closet can stay short so it freaks me out anyway so yeah it fits perfectly I was right it's 135 measurements were correct so what I'm about to do is I want to lift the screen a little higher up off the ground I'm gonna get me a nice speaker system maybe I gotta go online and look at a really good center speaker system like you know really eight inch center speakers oh if I get like four of those line them down at the bottom with the lid lights wrapped around them yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be berserk mode, but yeah, it'll fit there just perfectly. All right, so it's coming together, people. So what we're gonna do here is we got, this is gonna be all black technology here. Then we're gonna have our arcade set up here. And I'm gonna take that projector, mount it up there because these projectors use lens shift. So I can bring the image down so I'm gonna be walking in front of the screen. That one's gotta be mounted. And then this one right here, it's gonna be mounted up there. So it hits that over there. So. Everything is up high. I'm going to run three projectors in here at the same time. And we're going to finish a lead light in this place up. Because it's going to look like a disco when I get done here. A disco! Yeah. So, yeah. I love it, man. I love the screen. i got to find a company. So, what I'm going to do is, 
I'm sorry I know I've been slacking on these links, but I'll make sure I put this link in here because you got to have the screen. It was very easy to put together. No time at all. And I'm just one person. I'm going to be able to put this together, lift it up, throw it over there, no problem whatsoever. So they have make these. This company makes some in 100 inch, 120 inch, 135 and 155. I would love to get 155 in there, but as you can see, there's no room in there at all whatsoever. But yeah, it fits nicely. This is going to be for, I don't know what I'm going here now. Should I have, see now I'm thinking like, over here, I can only max it out to 100 inch. I can fit 120 inch on here, like 120 inch on here. And I'm thinking going bigger, but that projector is not going to give it to me. I just, the biggest one I can get on here is 100 inch. I want 120 inch over there. Be nice. Yeah, like I said, I'll put the link down the bottom. But yeah, you see screens that have that weird kind of, that peg system on it, with the little pegs? Yeah, go with those. They're much easier to put together. There's no springs, no pulling, no stretching. None of that crap. We're done. Now I got to leave out of here because I got to watch my packages. Even though I don't have to, it's not that kind of neighborhood, but still, you know, better safe than sorry. You know what I mean? Just want to make sure I make sure I get all my stuff in so I can basically start doing the rest of these, finish off the rest of the demonstrations. Now, those of you waiting for orders, I got to talk to my, uh, my person who ships on my packages. She's already confirmed the date when she can go take them down for me. So what I got to do is when I go on PayPal, I basically time the dates, which means that I got four days at the time of four days to the day that she picks them up. So I started dropping off tracking numbers today. I already got a um, uh, sofa full of uh, labels and containers and you'll have your orders and you'll be good to go. So like I said, that's the beautiful thing about our technology, man. I'm gonna turn this white screen into a jet black screen. It's gonna look freaking insane. Matter of fact, this is the 35 inch, right? We got a 35 inch downstairs. We got two of these in the house now. So that's the one in the gaming room. Oh, man, this mess. I got to clean up the day. Elite, oh, please come get your freaking screen. Yeah, that's me. This is my junky area right in here today. So that's me doing containers, charging a robot, and that's the 135 in here. This is Elite screen right here. That's their screen. We don't have anything rolling on this, do we? No, we don't. Let's see what we got coming over here on the phone. Pretty sure we got charged. Any packages? Nothing yet. I can hear out there chattering. He got another screen. Oh, whatever. Let me just come over and just ask me. If you want a screen put up, I can't come near you at all. But, you know, I can hook it up and leave it on the porch. <laughs> you know, we can do it that way. I transfer money through PayPal all the time. They can pay me right through PayPal. I wire the money to me. I set the whole entire thing up. Put it right out there for me. He's got to go pick it up. We have all little screen out there for the kids. All right. Sorry about that. A little complications with my phone. Does not want to be happy with me. Let's see right there. So this screen's going to look like this when I get done. I'm trying to get something to run on here. I fight with this thing so much. My phone, I got to fight with. We have such an opportunity now to change people's lives. I don't even get into that. All right, hold on for a minute. I got something weird going on with my phone right now. It's doing commercials and videos and everything at the same time. more commercials and it ain't bad enough you got to watch one commercial you got to watch another commercial after another commercial youtube's not making enough money let me see basement here we go Ah, I forgot that thing's on. Yeah, my other projector's on too. That's the one sitting up in the ceiling. That screen's black. Same technology. It's gonna look just like this when I get upstairs. All jet black.
But if you can see that screen with in the daytime with the light fixture in the center of the screen, is that insane or what? All right, people, when I get done, we will have this screen, the black screen upstairs. So I'm going to get ready to get that done. Turn my projector off a little bit. I've had these running like all day. Try to keep them off, try to keep them. This is what I'm working on next. So this right here is going to be the kitchen screen for inside the kitchen. So I told you how I messed up how I got the wrong freaking um, paper to match the granite top. This is as close as I could come to, because I couldn't find one exactly like mine. This is as close as I could come to. I'm not really caring about the middle part, because all this is going to be painted. I just want that border. So I'm going to put that frog tape all the way here, all the way around, paint the whole thing in, peel it off. I'm going to have this nice little border on the side, hang it up right over there. So I can basically watch TV or whatever while I'm in the kitchen, which would be pretty cool. It'd be nice to have a giant screen in the kitchen. That's what I like about the ultra short throws. I don't got to mound them nowhere. I just stick it right up against the wall and I'm done. And this is going to look real nice. So this is going to be a quote in. And this screen's made out of cardboard. It's not like cardboard projection screens. This is made out of cardboard. One of the problems you have when you deal with cardboard is you paint it, it's going to warp, it's going to buckle, all that. Because it's, 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 um, it's cardboard, you know? But when you put this top paper on, this contact paper, that protects it. And that gets a nice smooth finish to it on top of that. And then the good thing about it is you don't have to worry about warping that cardboard. This is going to look real nice. So next, I'm going to build me, I'm going to get some of that congregated cardboard. I think I'm saying it right. That real thick cardboard is for building furniture. I'm going to get two of those, have those glued together. Uh, pick out whatever, keep in mind, whatever you choose to put your contact paper, that becomes your border. Get some frog tape, put it around. I might do maybe a blue steel. Oh, a blue steel screen would be freaking cool. I mean, that'd be cool for the PS5, a blue steel frame. Hmm. Got me thinking. I'm gonna have to build something else now. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. And there's a place you can go to, and you can get custom-made contact on um, contact paper. So I can get one with the PS, uh, something logo all over it, some kind of design or something cool. Throw lead lights on it. Oh yeah, I got some ideas popping in. We're gonna do some cardboard projection screens next. That's what we're working on next. Cardboard screens. Once we get that one up and hung up, I'm gonna hang that up with Velcro. All right, people, I'm going to get back to my work over here because I got all those containers I got to drop labels on. And thank you for taking the time to come out on a Saturday and watch me put this screen together. I really appreciate that. Be safe out there, wherever you're at in the world, and God bless.